Um, as a reminder, what we're going to do today is continue the in-class exercise from last time. We didn't quite get all of the way through the incremental rate of return analysis. And so I'm going to bring that back up on the screen and I'd like us to get all the way through the process of identifying which alternative is best and what is the incremental rate of return compared to the second best option. So we're going to finish working through that and then we're going to do something that's similar although it will be on an annual worth basis. And so we'll talk about the incremental annual worth analysis. Uh, looking at the announcements, remember that homework 8, which includes some of these topics, is due on Monday. And then longer term, you've got the project, which is due on Friday, the 17th of April. I have your graded quizzes from last time. I'm just going to hand those uh, back to you as you're uh, working on the in-class exercise. Please take the paper, take yours out of the stack, and pass it on. So uh, what we're doing is we're continuing in-class exercise from last time, let me go to that page. We're going to follow the same approach as was illustrated here, where you have a head-to-head -head matchup of each of the acceptable alternatives, and you're gradually going to be calculating the internal rate of return on the increment. So if you want to check what you've done, I've got my solution so far up on the screen where we did the initial screening of each alternative, calculating the internal rate of return of each one of them individually, and then comparing it to the MAR. And you'll notice that I ended up rejecting Komatsu because its rate of return was less than the MAR. All of the others were acceptable. And so ordering them from the cheapest on the left and progressively more expensive, we can only know what is the first matchup. The first matchup will be cat versus deer. And so here in this column, C minus D is the cost of the cat minus the cost of the deer. And so here's the incremental cost is the extra 25000 that it costs the incremental revenue for each, and then at the bottom I do the IRR on the incremental cash flow, and since the internal rate of return of the difference is less than the minimum, that means that the CAT isn't good enough. More specifically, it means that the extra amount for the CAT compared to the deer isn't good enough. And so we reject CAT because it's less than the minimum, and so the next matchup, Hitachi versus Deer. So I can't create these columns until I know the result of the first comparison of cat versus deer. So let me pause for a moment and give you some time to continue your analysis and uh, we'll see if we all end up in the same conclusion. Okay, so <clears throat> the initial screening tells us that we can reject Komatsu. It's not acceptable. So we have the cheapest is deer, the next most expensive is cat. So remember, we don't know any of these other ones except for the first matchup until we find out who wins out of cat versus deer. So pretend like those other columns, which I did er earlier today, pretend like they're not there. So we have to look at what's the conclusion. And it's not enough just to calculate the incremental internal rate of return. You need to have like a decision or what's the conclusion that you draw from calculating this incremental internal rate of return. So when we compare the two, the rate of return on the difference in cost between the cat and the deer. The cat is 25700 more expensive. And for that added expense, you get a certain amount of additional revenue each year. 
And the rate of return on that additional revenue is 11.2%, which is below the minimum. So what that means is it's not justified to spend the extra amount to get the cap. So you should stick with the deer. So since this is below the minimum, reject cat, keep deer is the conclusion of the first matchup. And so then the next comparison is going to be Hitachi versus deer. So we're not going to compare Hitachi to cat because we already rejected cat. We're not going to compare Hitachi to Komatsu because Komatsu is not in the running. We want to compare Hitachi to what we know is currently our best alternative, which is deer. So this next analysis, Hitachi versus deer, <coughs> yields an incremental internal rate of return. So the rate of return on the difference is 18.6%. Since that's greater than the minimum, that means accept the more expensive alternative. So it is justified to spend 33,000 extra to get the Hitachi instead of the deer. And the reason why it's justified is that every year you're going to get $7,500 in additional revenue because you have that more expensive, somehow more capable equipment. And the rate of return when you compare the added revenue and the added cost that it takes to get that revenue, the rate of return is 18.6%, greater than the minimum. So then in addition to calculating this, we also have to have what's the interpretation. So the interpretation is we, reject, uh, we now accept the Hitachi. So our best alternative right now is Hitachi. The second best alternative is Deer. So now we want to find out can Volvo replace Hitachi? So we have the V versus H comparison. The incremental internal rate of return there is negative. So that's a no on the Volvo. And so the last comparison isn't Atlas versus Volvo because we just rejected Volvo. We want to compare Atlas to the current reigning champion of the best equipment. And what we had so far was Hitachi. So the last comparison is going to be Atlas versus Hitachi. And since the rate of return on the increment is less than the minimum, the minimum being 12%, that means we reject Atlas, keep Hitachi, and Hitachi was the overall best option. And the handout I gave you asks, what's the rate of return for the best alternative compared to the second best alternative? So the best alternative was Hitachi, Deer was second best, and the rate of return on the difference is 18.6%. So we should choose Hitachi. The overall internal rate of return for Hitachi is 20.4%, but the rate of return on the increment, meaning the added cost compared to our second best option, is 18.6%. Now. Let's just check a present worth analysis. That's another way to double, like to verify your decision. And our decision when we went through this incremental comparison was Hitachi is best. We have other tools to verify what's best and one of them is present worth analysis. And in present worth analysis what we should do is we should look for which alternative has the greatest positive present worth when we discount everything at the MAR. And so I'm using the NPV function and I'm applying the NPV function only to future amounts because the amount at year zero is already at the present. So I don't have to put it inside the NPV function. Instead I'm adding it separately outside the NPV function. But I can find the NPV for each of these alternatives and the one that is highest and positive is the Hitachi. We see that Komatsu is below zero because its rate of return is less than the minimum. So that's another indicator that uh, Komatsu is just rejected from the outset. All the other alternatives are acceptable. We won't lose money by using the other equipment, but Hitachi is the equipment that gives us the most return. And so present worth analysis verifies what we can do with the incremental analysis. 
Any questions on incremental internal rate of return? This is really important. Um, I love giving questions like this on the exam. Absolutely love it. So be prepared. It gives, I love it because it gives you a chance to show how smart you are. So remember, all of these uh, in-class exercises are recorded and posted on YouTube. So if I went through something too fast, you can watch it as many times as you like later on. And in fact, YouTube even lets you speed up and slow down. So when I'm talking, you can speed it up so you don't have to listen to me speak so long. Then when I'm doing the spreadsheet, you can slow it down and uh, have more time to follow it. We do need to move on, though. So let's now shift to talking about the annual worth analysis. So what we're going to talk about now is incremental annual worth analysis. And you may remember that we can compare alternatives with uh, the future basis or with the present basis, but we can also sometimes uh, compare alternatives on how much they cost each year. And so certain pieces of equipment it just makes more sense to compare them on an annual basis because they get replaced frequently. Um, an illustration of that might be computer equipment where you have two laptops and they're going to be replaced really often but maybe one of them lasts a little bit longer than the other. So uh, if we just find the uh, equivalent annual cost that can be a convenient way of comparing these alternatives. And the question is well when you do it on an annual basis what about comparing them incrementally. So the difference in cost of one alternative compared to another. And that incremental annual worth an analysis will tell us the rate of return on the additional investment required for the more expensive alternative. So if the HP costs more each year than the Lenovo, hopefully you're somehow more capable with the HP. Maybe it boots up faster or I don't know what, but it's somehow better. Maybe it has a, uh, like a wireless modem that allows you to be productive while you're traveling. So it costs more, but you get more work done, so it's more valuable. So the question is, is that extra capability worth investing in? What's the rate of return on the extra amount, but we're doing it on an annual basis? So we're going to be solving for delta I star which means the incremental, the delta means the difference between two options, and I star is internal rate of return. So we're doing it on an annual worth basis. Um, we, our, our method that is implied in the spreadsheet template that I've given you, the method is that you have to iterate, where you start with some guess interest rate. You don't know the exact amount, so you start with a placeholder, like maybe 1% and then you keep changing the interest rate until you find that the two annual worths are equal. And that setting the, uh, the difference between the two equal to zero, meaning that they're the same annual worth, is how you can find the rate of return on the difference between them. So we're going to learn the method by comparing two pieces of equipment, a, a Bobcat and a Caterpillar, each we know the initial cost for. Remember that we express costs as a negative value. So in the spreadsheet today, you'll put negative 8,000 as the initial cost for option A, negative 13,000 for the initial cost of option B. Uh, we know the annual cost, so that's going to be the maintenance and fuel and upkeep expenses. And then the lifespan for each equipment, we're going to use the lifespan to annualize the initial cost and to annualize the salvage value. So can you think of a function, a built-in financial function in Excel that takes a present value to a recurring annual amount? What function do we use to find an annual amount? To find A given P or find A given F? Do you remember the Excel function? PMT. PMT, that's right. So equals PMT is the function that you're going to use to find the annual equivalent of the initial cost 
and the annual cost. Uh, excuse me, the annual cost is already on an annual basis. So you use the payment function on the initial and on the salvage. So here's the template that's in that file I ask you to download from Blackboard. It's just so you don't have to type all the, uh, the, the formatting in that's uh, already here. So translate the problem statement, start filling in the blanks, and we're going to have to start with an initial guess. And we're trying to figure out what's the rate of return on the difference between the two. Remember, Excel functions tend to change the sign between what you put in and what you get out for those financial calculations. Remember how we always, how we always have to put the negative sign when we use the PV function or the FV function? We have to do the same thing in the payment function, otherwise it's going to reverse a cost into a revenue. So the initial cost is 8000 and I've just got a guest value, so a guess value so far. I don't know what the interest rate is going to be in the end because I have to iterate that. But as a starting point, I'm saying let's just start with 1%. And so if the interest rate is 1%, then what's the annual equivalent of a lump sum of 8,000? So the inputs I've got there is the interest rate, which is a guess, the number of periods, which is 10 years, and then the present value, which is the initial cost, and I put the minus sign in to make sure I preserve it as a cost because Excel wants to flip that. Annual cost doesn't need the payment function because it's already annual. The salvage value needs the uh, payment function, but <clears throat> the salvage value is a lump sum in the future, so I put that amount in the FB field, not in the PV field. So if the interest rate is 1%, then the annual cost of option A is $4,344.
and the annual cost of option B is $3,886. The question is, how do I make it so that the difference between the two is zero? What interest rate is going to make it so that the difference in cost between the two options is zero? Okay, so <clears throat> when you calculate the rate of return, you should get 12.65%. Raise your hand if you got 12.65%. <laughs> Not everyone. Um, so what is 12.65%? What does that mean? Which option is best? Well, and and what does the 12.65 mean? So at 12.65, they're both equivalent. And then, so at 9, that would mean the one with the low, the lower payments would be cheaper? All right, so <clears throat> he's approaching it the right way. He's saying, so if our minimum is 9%, and that, it says that at the bottom of the paper, it says, if your company's MAR is 9%, which is best? So let's put in 9% and see what happens. So at 9%, one of these options costs less each year to own. So if your interest rate is 9%, option B is going to have an annual cost of $4,608, whereas option A is $4,746. Well, 47 if we round up. So what you want to do is you want to minimize your expense. So option B is going to give you less expense. And so what should you choose? You should choose option B. Option B is the better equipment. So then, but what, what is 12.65%? What, is like, what does that mean, the physical significance of that particular number? So it means that the more expensive option, option B, is giving you a rate of return of 12.65%. So back to the MAR of 9%, 0.09. All right, so option B costs more money up front, but we're going to be saving $138 on an annual basis. So if you compare the added revenue, which the, the cost savings compared to the uh, added expense, then the rate of return of the difference is 12.65 percent. So point, oops, point one two six five. 12.65 percent is the rate of return on, on the difference in cost between the two. So the more expensive alternative is justified since that's greater than the mark. So I can't emphasize enough how important it is to be able to interpret your analysis. It's not enough just to do the analysis to know what order to put the columns in and to have like a kind of an instinct for dragging the formulas down and calculating in the rate of return. But you have to know, so what's the conclusion then? Which option should you choose? And being able to interpret the physical significance of the analysis is just as important as doing it in the first place. Any questions or lingering concerns or spreadsheets that never did end up working that I can debug? You got it? Can I see your equation for C on option B? Sure. So the key thing there is you put the amount into the future value field, not into the present value field. Because the salvage value is a lump sum at the end of the end of the years. 
Okay, um, as a reminder, what's on your plate is homework assignment number eight. That's due before class on Monday. And if you've already got that finished, then you should look to the future and start working on your project. The overall project report's due on the 17th. And I told you, the students who do real well on that project are the ones who get an early start. The ones who do less well are the ones who procrastinate. All right, have a nice weekend. I'll see you on Monday.